What's up guys, Andrew here. Today I'll be reviewing the new Lenovo IdeaPad 100S. This is a new 11.6 inch compact notebook that is aimed at someone that is on a budget and usually works on light duty programs and schoolwork. This notebook is competing with the likes of the HP Stream 11 and Asus X205TA. Those two are the segment leaders at the moment and Lenovo wants a piece of that pie. Here are the specs on the notebook. You're getting an Intel 8 on Z3735F, two gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of EMC flash storage, an 11.6 inch HD display, and Windows 10 out of the box. The retail price of this notebook is 199 US. The design and build quality is surprisingly very good for a budget notebook. It features this red and black two-tone plastic finish that looks gorgeous. On the bottom you have your two speaker grills and there are no vents since this notebook is fanless. The weight comes in at 2.2 pounds and the thickest point is 0.69 inches. The interior of this notebook is constructed of all black plastic materials. On top you have your dual microphones and an 0.3 megapixel front facing camera. On the left side of the notebook you have your AC charging port, full size HDMI, headset microphone jack combo, and a micro SD card slot. It is a bummer that they did not include a regular SD card slot, but hey, this is better than nothing. And on the right side you have two USB 2.0 ports, which is similar to the ASUS X205TA. If you really want that USB 3.0 port, take a look at my full review on the HP Stream 11. That model features one USB 3 and one USB 2. The interior features your power button, power status indicator, battery status indicator, and your Lenovo One Key recovery button. This notebook features an 11.6 inch TN panel with a resolution of 1366 by 768. Text and images are fairly sharp, especially at this screen size. The color accuracy is poor, just like the Stream 11 and ASUS X205TA, however at this price point, there is very little room to complain. If I had to choose between these three panels, I would give a slight edge to the ASUS X205TA. But keep in mind, the ASUS has a glossy panel unlike the other two which feature an anti-glare display. Another big complaint was the viewing angles. They are very poor and you'll just have to tilt it at a right angle in order to get a decent picture out of it. With that being said, the good thing about this panel is the anti-glare coating on it and it does an excellent job of reducing glare. Keyboard performance was about average. The key travel is a tad short and the tactile feedback is okay. Overall it does feel a little crammed but once you get adapted to this keyboard your experience will get much better. Next up is trackpad performance. This trackpad has been smooth and precise. The only issue is the two finger scrolling is not working. I have checked all the settings and control properties and it's still not working. Hopefully Lenovo can issue a driver update to address this problem. The CPU powering this notebook is an Intel Atom Z3735F. This is a quad core chip clocked at 1.3 GHz, but can turbo boost up to 1.83 GHz. Less demanding programs like web browsing, office productivity, and even HD Netflix video streaming will be fine on this CPU. Just don't expect to edit 720p videos on here because it will be sluggish. For the graphics, you're getting an Intel HD graphics that is based off the Bay Trail architecture. Light duty games like League of Legends will be playable on this notebook. And here's a quick test of Minecraft in action at 1366 by 768 on low settings with the Optifine plugin installed. On average, you can get around 20 to 25 frames per second if you keep your settings low. With that being said, certain scenes will drop to around 18 to 22 frames per second. Maybe the latest version of this Optifine plugin is kind of buggy, because in my previous ASUS X205TA laptop, which features the same processor, and that one consistently averaged around 40 to 45 frames per second. Next up is League of Legends running at 1366 by 768 on low settings. I've been averaging around 32 to 35 frames per second, and the game was actually quite playable. Just remember to keep your settings down and you'll have a good experience. The biggest limitation on this notebook is obviously the 32GB of eMMC flash storage. Out of the box you're really only getting about 19.7GB of free space. The performance is slightly faster than a traditional hard drive, but the space limitation will be a deal breaker for some. Keep in mind there is a micro SD card slot for memory expansion. For those of you with a regular SD card, you'll just have to carry around dongles and adapters. Battery performance is very good for a notebook this size. On average, I'm getting around 7 to 7.5 seven hours out of full charge with 50% screen brightness. You can thank the super power efficient Intel Atom processor for this kind of awesome battery life. The webcam quality from this 0.3 megapixel sensor was horrible. If you plan on doing a lot of video chatting, you'll be highly disappointed. 
There are two bottom facing speakers that are actually pretty decent. At this price point you figured they would just throw some crappy ones in here, but the sound quality is adequate and the sound levels are great. Here's the quick sound test in action. So let's get to the closing thoughts of this notebook. If you're looking for a budget laptop for under $200 that can get your basic schoolwork done, then look no further than the all new Lenovo 100S. This notebook offers great solid performance that can even play some light duty games on very low settings. The cons were the display quality was not up to par and the keyboard can feel crammed at times. However, the pros outweigh the cons on this notebook. Overall, Lenovo has a solid winner for under 200 bucks. Guys, be sure to check out my HP Stream 11 and Asus X205TA review for a better comparison. Those two notebooks are pretty similar to the Lenovo 100S. Keep in mind, the HP Stream 11 does come with a free year of Office 365. Alright guys, this about wraps my full review on the new Lenovo IdeaPad 100S. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to stomp on that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.